It all began as a vision, a vision of a bishop for a people with a long, rich history of mission work. In 2001, Bishop Neil Irons shared the idea of a mission center, a hands-on kind of place where persons could be the hands and the feet of God in service. The bishop appointed 35 persons to a task force. Um, they decided to be three areas that we would focus on primarily, mission education, we place for mission outreach, and the last part would be disaster response, since we live in an area that we do have some flooding here in the Susquehanna Valley, uh, that we would be more uh, closely aligned to respond for, for disasters. So those were the three primary areas. The location for the suggested name Mission Central would be a new building adjacent to the conference center on Mulberry Drive. It would cost three and a half million dollars to buy land and build the building. Mission Central would open in June of 2004. But something changed. A building for lease twice the size of the plan and air conditioned came to the attention of Bishop Irons who offered to purchase the building from the owners. Uh, they got back to us the next day and said they were going to offer us the building for $2.45 million, a million dollars less than it would cost us to build a place half as big up the street. It sits on a larger piece of property in a much bigger building. And they committed to give us $245,000. In June 2002, the purchase of 5 Pleasant View Drive was miraculously approved. Mission Central opened June 28, 2002, two years early. Mission Central has been involved with every major disaster since 2002. The disaster response part of the original triple purpose goal is met continually. Missionaries come here and provide programming. Mission displays are always changing for United Methodist Ministries and non-United Methodist Ministries. A decision was made early on that Mission Central would be ecumenical. Work with ministries both denominational and non-denominational is very intentional. We're going to walk out in the warehouse and I'm going to show you some of the ministries that are here. Those things that are on there now are flood buckets and things like that for, for UMCOR. Now the stuff behind over here is a pro Project Cure. That's from Colorado. Um, the, this material right here that say FFCM on them, that's for the Fruit Belt Farm Workers Christian Ministry. We average about 20 to 25 volunteers a day. Unlike a lot of ministries of our type, we don't have an age cut off for volunteers. This is an example of health kits from UMCOR. Uh, UMCOR is United Methodist Committee on Relief, and we work on all those kits. This time of year, we try to have about 2,500 flood buckets here because we're getting ready to go into the hurricane season. One of the things which we have done now uh, since actually February of last year we now have hubs, you may have heard about those. We have eight hubs now, uh, seven in Pennsylvania. One, our seventh one's going to open in our conference uh, shortly, um, and that'll be up in the Wellsboro District. Uh, but we have four in the State College District, um, and we have uh, two north of that. We have one in uh, New, York, New York State now, in Cortland, New York, right off of 81. And a hub is basically a mini mission central. This area back here is Bethesda Missions Food Ministry. The bikes, uh, we started collecting bikes, we use those locally, and tomorrow a group called Bikes for the World will be here and take the rest of the bikes which we have. So this is our sewing room, and this is where we make school kit bags. That area down there is the computer ministry, um, and they collect computers, uh, previous generation computers. What we've learned is our ministry is really to the people that come in the door. Uh, the boxes are a means but the real ministry is to the people. What will we do to respond to the tragedy of Hurricane Katrina? First, we can pray. Then, I invite compassionate Central Pennsylvanians to reach deep into their hearts and help alleviate suffering over the many months it will take to recover. Your donation designated for hurricane relief goes directly to help alleviate this suffering. I'm sure you, as I, have been alarmed, disturbed, and shaken by the devastation that we've seen portrayed 
as hurricane after hurricane has rent destruction upon God's people in many, many ways our sisters and brothers are suffering. Through Mission Central, we have already sent 1,000 flood buckets to those hurricane-ravaged areas. We're preparing to send yet another 2,000 flood buckets. God has given us ways to reach out when we see the suffering that we've experienced and heard about. Thanks be to God that through our United Methodist Connection, we now have ways to respond when we hear these stories. are filled with images of such unbelievable suffering as we hear stories of courage in the midst of such devastation as we see signs of people reaching out to bring hope and healing we turn to you as our only source finally for hope If someone didn't know anything about Mission Central, what would you tell them? This is sacred space because there's always God moments happening here. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that you have your own ideas of what you would like to bring to the program. Can you share any of the um, goals that you have set to accomplish? Helping to give vision to not only the staff and the volunteers that are here, but to the conference in a, in a broader sense, the vision of where we can head and things that we can do help to connect the dots between those that are in need and those that have the resources that, that can meet those needs and make those connections. Um, also just to challenge folks, to challenge uh, the staff, the volunteers, to challenge uh, other folks out in the other churches and in, in the area, and whether it's ecumenical or United Methodist churches, uh, to how they can participate in our mission and ministry here that God has called us to do, which I truly feel it's a calling from God. Would you mind sharing with us one of the God moments that you have experienced here at Mission Central? This past weekend we had a ministry fair and some of the hubs were sharing, that's, that's sort of our sub-Mission Centrals that are out in the region. They were sharing they needed a certain amount of money for something and they weren't sure if it was going to happen and right in the last moment it shows up right exactly what they needed. If God calls us, God will empower us, God will make the way for those things to happen. And it's trusting in God, in God's timing and God's direction. God calls us to make that first step. We may not always know where we're stepping, but uh, God will lead us. Grace and peace to my beloved sisters and brothers of the Susquehanna Conference. When we chose this name for our conference, we saw the river as life-giving, as a beautiful, flowing, unifying image of God's creation in our midst. As we've experienced the ravages of the river and its tributaries during these past weeks, we must now turn to Scripture to understand that through it all, God is with us. Isaiah writes, as translated by Eugene Peterson, Don't be afraid. I've redeemed you. I've called your name. You're mine. When you're in over your head, I'll be there with you. When you're in rough waters, you will not go down. Those words took on new meaning for many of you as you've struggled with rebuilding homes, churches, and lives. We are called now to be hope bearers. We've distributed thousands of cleaning buckets and health kits from Mission Central and from the hubs even more. Furniture and other goods are pouring in. All but about 
three counties in our conference have been affected by these floods. We're called to share Christ's healing presence with those in need. When I think of Mission Central, I can feel my heart expanding with hope and joy. My image of this wonderful place is that this is the house of multiplication, a place where generosity is multiplied many times over. John's Gospel tells the story of Jesus preaching to thousands and the realization that it's dinner time and there's not a bite to eat and no Kentucky Fried Chicken in the neighborhood. You remember what happened next. Then Andrew says, This little boy has five barley loaves and two fish. And we know what happened next. Because this boy shared his food, all were fed, and they filled twelve baskets with the leftovers. It is with great gratitude for the thousands whose generosity makes this place possible for the multiplication of gifts, for the hundreds of thousands whose lives have been touched by this ministry, to God's generous generosity to us, which allows all who are involved in Mission Central to witness God's power when we dare to follow where Christ leads. Every year, millions of dollars worth of merchandise comes through a unique warehouse in Mechanicsburg. It's a busy place for sure, high demand too, for people around the world who need it most. Chuck's out and about with Mission Central. Ten years ago, this one-acre warehouse in Mechanicsburg stood empty, a mission waiting to happen. Today, from wall to wall, ceiling to floor, that mission is well underway. It's to uh, respond in disaster, to respond in mission outreach, and to uh, offer mission education. Mission Central began as the vision of Bishop Neil Irons, head of the former Central Pennsylvania Conference of the United Methodist Church. His goal was to centralize and organize the church's involvement with hundreds of ministry programs and social services around the world, connecting what he called God's resources with those needing them thousands of volunteers finding a way to contribute. I enjoy it because I know I'm doing things for other people that can't do it themselves. New Digs is one of the ministries housed inside the warehouse, finding homes for a half million dollars worth of slightly used furniture and household goods each year. It's a, a, a way of, our way of serving God, you know, we, it's something that he had put in my heart and then he just kind of blew it up. <laughs> Between nine and ten million dollars worth of humanitarian goods and services leave the warehouse every year. Some collected from or sent to hub stations around the region before moving on to the next natural or man-made disaster area. Those involved call these missions God moments. Well, you have a lot of faith trusting in God, but it, there's a lot of folks involved and so but if you time manage it well and communication, uh, it really works well. Out and about, where good deeds are moved by forklifts and faith, I'm Chuck Rhodes for ABC 27 News. What an operation. Yeah, it's awesome.